I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Everybody, welcome to the YS channel. Today we're going to be covering another terrible video game adaptation from the early 90s with 1994's Street Fighter, or Street Fighter the movie. And as we already mentioned already, um, the 1990s was a time of experimentation with video game adaptations. You had Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. You had this movie. You had the Super Mario Brothers movie, which I think it was released in 95. I forget what year. But you, you get the point. Yes. Well, another reason why Street Fighter 94 came out the way it did, one, Capcom, which is the video game business company that owns the rest of Street Fighter, interfered with the production. Two, they were filming the movie in Bangkok during a military uprising, which the Thailand, the Thailand military uh, put down, originally. <laughs> and then, and then, and then you had John Clark and Dan, the main star, being a fucking diva. Diva, and then the cast and crew doing, um, doing what people do in, in Bangkok late at night. Yeah. So, for those of you unfamiliar with the background of this movie, Jean Claude Van Damme, a phoned it and he phoned in his performance. He, he did not give a shit. B, he was coked out of his goddamn mind. And if you watch some of these clips, you can tell, man, that guy is on the cocaine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cocaine, <laughs> ego, and whatever, and whatever he was paid paid to be in this movie. Oh, let's be fair here. The saving grace of this movie, Julia's performance in Bison. Ah, uh, let's be fair. Why? Uh, that's the only saving grace of this movie. Uh, Otherwise, it's a, it's a shit show. What you know? What's sad about his performance in this movie is that he was literally dying during the production of this movie. All oh, Julio's ch children were fans of the video games, and he made sure his final performance and feature motion picture wasn't complete garbage just to satisfy his children. Yeah. Uh, you hit the nail right on the head there. That's the only reason he agreed to do the movie it was, again, his grandchildren, his children. Um, huge fans of the, you know, the video game, and he just wanted to do it for them because... The entire time this was being filmed, I believe this was his last theatrical performance. Um, either way, he was fighting cancer. I believe it was stomach cancer. So, um, if you're not familiar with any of his other movies, you know, he plays, he's in the Addams Family movies from the early yes. 90s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at his appearance then, compared to it in this movie, you can tell, I mean, the guy is being ravaged, but he still gave it his all. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say, I will say that, yeah, sorry, I started to cut you off there, but this is time Rob Holder's first, um, first time giving, giving a career best performance in a very terrible movie. Back in the 80s, he appeared in a straight to, straight to TV movie for one of the local PBS channels somewhere out there. Go older on the, at the memory bank. The movie was so bad it got lampooned on Mystery Science Theater, Science Theater 3000. But but again, his performance was praised, given how terrible the movie was. <laughs> true. Um. So it's clear to say he was a true professional. And then you look at the shit show, the cast he was stuck with for this. The guy deserved better. Damn. Yeah. You know. Uh, he's obviously the star that they built this movie around. Mm -hmm. And god damn, he did not give a shit. So he yeah. plays Guile. Um, the character Guile. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're not familiar with Street Fighter, he's the dude dressed up in the army fatigues with the crazy blonde flat top haircut. And he does Sonic Boom as his special move. That's him. So in this one, uh, he He's kind of similar. Uh, they didn't really change that character too much for this. They 
the only nitpick really besides Van Damme's terrible performance is they make him the focal point of the movie. Whereas again, anybody familiar with the Street Fighter franchise, for the most part, um, it centers around Ryu and Ken. And now another notable actor or actress is Ming Na Win. Yes. Now, if you're not familiar with who she is, um, she's in The Mandalorian. She plays the, I think the character's name is Fennec something. Yeah, Fennec Shen. Yeah, she plays that. She's the voice of Mulan for the you know the Disney Mulan movie. Mm-hmm. And then she's appeared in other films. Yes, she was also in um, Joy Light Club, which was like, for a while, the only mainstream Asian-American movie out, out there. Yeah. So now she actually does a decent Chun Li in this movie. But the this movie is so campy and just you yes. know, kind of her performance is kind of wasted. Now Ryu and Ken are in the movie. Mm-hmm. And so is Zangief. There's other I think they got a lot of the main cast. But they're they all just... Yeah, they basically had that basically had most of the main characters in Street Fighter in at the time in the, in the movie one way one way or another. Another um, one thing this movie did get right was they cast most of the actors according to the ethnic back background of what country they came, they came from for the most part. Most part because usually movies movies at this time time in Hollywood did not give a shit. Give shit. I, I, I didn't just cast a white, white guy guy and a meant for an Asian or black person. In this movie, they got it right for the most part. The exception, they put a Belgian as, a, as an American. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, who cares? <laughs> 90s, they're, you know, late 90s video game adaptations. Uh-huh. They totally changed up things for some stupid ass reason. I don't know why. Oh, I know, I know, I know what to a certain extent. Capcom, which is, which is the video game, production company behind Street Fighter, they were nitpicking uh, with the, stu- the studio uh, producing Street Fighter. I believe it's Universal Studios that made the movie. I could be wrong, wrong, but point point is, Capcom was basically saying marching orders to Universal Studios that they want this done, this and this and that. And certain scenes in the, in the movie had to be approved ahead of time. That time, so Capcom could capitalize on a toy line, which was being planned for this movie. That's that's why there's scenes with tanks, a stuff bolt, stuff bolt, and other other, other things. In yes, and another, another thing to add on to that, one thing did come out of this movie. Movie, um, well, I won't say that we're gonna be as a result of this movie, but the movie clearly influenced the production of this. The same animation studio in, in Korea that animated. The X Men cartoon, cartoon in the 1990s, was given the was given the task of of, of animating a Street Fighter um, adaptation for American American um, audiences. Yes! Yes! And once again, once again, Gaio is the leader of the Street Fighters, not Ryu and Ken. Oh yeah, I remember that show. <laughs> Ugh. And now the show does give us one hilarious and bison meme, which we're going to slap into this, you know, well, in the editing process. But he's like, yeah, yes, 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 yes. It's just such, it's delivered so shitty. It's funny. Um, with that said, returning back to the this movie itself. So basically, M. Bison is still M. Bison. You know, he's a Terrorist, Shadow you know, leader. You know, he destroys Chun Li's village and kills her father, which more or less kind of lines up with the backstory of the original games. You know, but instead of being defeated by Ryu, you know, uh, it's Guile and his military force that takes him down on this. Yes, and. Yeah, and that, another, that's another reason why this movie is actually kind of bad, because when we were filming it in Thailand, there was a military uprising, I won't go uprising, but basically, basically there was political tension going on in the, in the military of Thailand, which is the ruling force of the country, 
was putting it down. And as a result, some of the military stuff they wanted to put into this movie, they could not get the permission to do so. For example, the South Boat thing was actually meant, was, was, was supposed to be it was supposed to involve jet fighters, but they weren't they were they were denied permission to use jet fighters because of what was going on. Yeah. Now, interesting. Um, the director is Steven Souza. Uh, mm -hmm. I probably mispronounced that name. You know, he's a notable director in Hollywood. He's made. He's been involved with a lot of projects, so I'm surprised he made one this shitty. But oh, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no thing that got any fear for production. Uh, the other cast and crew, when they had, when they weren't weren't filming, they were indulging themselves in the infamous Bangkok night, night nightlife, and you have you don't have a you have no idea what what goes on in Bangkok at night. Um, watch the movie The Hangover Part Two. Oh, that would basically give you um, a clean version of of what goes goes down there. I also listen to the song by the group called Chess called One Night in Bangkok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. One night in Bangkok makes a hard man humble. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way you would expect either. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god. Well, um, now this movie. Well, uh, I'm gonna say this about this movie. Uh, there is one scene that will make any hard man humble. So, the best scene, probably, and one of the shit show of the movie. We got the, one of the most memorial, rememberable scenes in any movie ever made. And it's the scene where like, he's got, and Bison's got Chen Li prisoner. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. And, you know, he's, he's got her, like, you know, like in his lair, his, quarters or whatever you want to call it right he basically gave us a banker at some point in the movie yeah pretty much <laughs> and then you know she starts talking to him condescendingly you know she's like you know you're huge huge army you know barely could put up a fight against the farmers with pitchforks you know she's just trying to like demasculate <laughs> all right Basically, she's she's trash. She's shit talking him, right? Yeah. And the whole time she's shit talking him. He's changing into his, you know, casual or his formal dinner attire or whatever, which he just puts on like a silk robe and he changes hats. And he he's listening, right? But he's no selling everything she's saying. Mm -hmm. You know, and she talks about how, you know, he killed her father. And all that. And then, <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm sorry. You know, I don't remember any of it. You know, and all of a sudden, she's like, the whole time she's all condescending and smug. And then you can physically see her soul just leave her body. She's like, what do you mean you don't remember any of it? <laughs> I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you... The day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> that, is such a, that is such a sick bird <laughs> in any movie. Yeah. Like, uh... Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'll be completely dumping on too. Like, if someone told me that, like. Day and by Sweet Grace Your Village is the most important day of your life, but for me, it's Tuesday. <laughs> well, b b besides the things that were bringing the movie down, down, which my opinion, my opinion, John Van Damme did, did the most apart from Capcom and and the and the, and the, and the toy companies in Hollywood, um, wearing the, the wearing the movie themselves. John Van Damme was such a dickhead on set, said that he 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 wouldn't come out of his trailer on us. He felt like his muscles looked right, looked right, and as a result, sort of the delay, the delays being forced upon him, the director actually ripped out pages of the script and said, "We're back on track." <laughs> yeah, uh, his need of behavior. They should have got Gary Daniels to play the role. I mean, I get it. He's not as big of, he's not as bankable of a name at that time. He would have done a better job in that position. Now, with that said. As shitty and crazy as this movie is, 
believe it or not, it was a commercial success. Like it yes. grossed over, I think it, at some point it grossed over a hundred million dollar box office. It came in- close to it came close to a hundred million dollars, and for a period for a short period of time, it was the most successful um, beginning adapt- adaptation of any of, uh, movie uh, movie around until Mortal Kombat beat it. So marked a turning point for Van Damme's career. Um, he had a couple more Universal Soldier movies. Other than that, I don't I can't think of anything remarkable that he was in. This was just his last major box, box office hit. Had had because every because I think every other movie he, that, that he had released in the nineties did not come anywhere anywhere, anywhere close to hundred million dollars. At one point, he was starring in a movie in a movie with uh, Dennis Rodman. That's how it blew his career sunk. <laughs> yeah, like he he was going the way of Seagal, like uh, direct to video. Yeah. Which what happened? You know, what happened with Miz? I, 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 Van Damme, he, he actually essentially owned own up to his failures and mistakes. And he actually got clean and sober, or at least clean and sober enough, not enough to recover part of his career. Career, so he actually realized he was the problem. Problem, problem. When when he noticed things weren't going right, and he tried to get he tried to get his life, tried to turn his life back around. I would say he succeeded, but again, but again, again, mental, mental illness and drug addictions are very hard things. To Beat so, yeah. As long as he's keeping those things at bay, I say he's doing doing a very good job. <laughs> now, with that said, um, that wraps up our review of 1994 Street Fighter. And as always, I'm gonna redo that take. <laughs> um, yeah. Hold on, give me like ten more seconds. Well, if you liked our content, as always, yeah, please drop a like, follow, subscribe. It helps out our channel tremendously. Yes. And then until the next time, later, y'all. Yes. Peace out.